I've decided to release clips from a workshop that I did specifically for actors and other creative professionals. We tend to encounter awkward and uncomfortable moments with family and friends where they ask us all kinds of questions, things that can be a little bit awkward to answer. When are you going to be famous? How are you paying your bills? You should be on that show that I like because you look just like the lead woman. These awkward moments with family and friends that don't really understand what we do as actors comes up all the time. And so I wanted to release it out there into the world so that everybody has access to it and can benefit from it. I think the ideas and the content inside these videos can actually be broadly applicable to a variety of careers and a variety of topics that are not particularly comfortable for you to talk about with your family. Maybe there are some adjustments that you have to make to the idea, but I bet you can still get a lot out of these videos, even if you're not an actor or some kind of other creative professional. And if you wanna watch the entire workshop all in one go, it's in the little free library that is on my website. I will of course put a link in the description. The clip today is more about making empowering meanings out of these awkward moments. And in this section, I encourage you to look for the insecurities that these comments and questions are hitting within you. And I tell a story about a time where a comment from my dad hit an insecurity within me, but then I was able to reframe where he was coming from with that comment into a much more empowering meaning for myself. So they don't get it and that's okay, like we were talking about before, because ultimately, Every awkward moment means what you make it mean. So something as sort of jarring as, am I going to see you on my TV soon? That to us can feel like, oh my God, she's judging me. She thinks I should quit. She has some kind of certain timeline for me. And she's disappointed that I'm not further along in my career. Or it's been too long since I've been on a screen that she's able to see. Things like that. Or she's interested and supportive of my career and of me, but that question is making me feel insecure and inadequate. And those feelings are what we need to allow grace and space for within us. But those are our work. Those are our inner work. Our insecurities are our mindset work. Those are the things that we can then look at and go, hmm, this question is really bothering me. Why? Why does that really bother me? And I'm, you know, feeling insecure in that particular area of my career. And so therefore, that's why it's bringing up these things to start looking at it in that way. Because if we feel supremely confident in ourselves, if the insecurities are gone, that question hits differently, right? If I'm feeling real good, if I'm on top of the world, if I've completely like kind of grounded that actor identity and I'm feeling really confident in myself as an artist, somebody asks me, am I going to see you on my TV soon? I'm probably just like, oh, you know what? I don't have anything coming up right now, but I will definitely let you know. And the, it doesn't even phase me. Like I just, I have this inner confidence. I don't hear behind that question a need to like prove myself or to prove my legitimacy or to prove that like, oh, I do enough acting to be considered an actor. I'm secure in my own knowledge and you're asking a question. That's it. That's all that's happening. I get to decide the story behind the question. I get to decide what the question means to me. I get to decide all, all of that kind of stuff. And then this brings up another story from my dad. Oh, if he only knew how many stories he's inspired over the years. It's all good though. I know my dad is very supportive and he loves me a lot and is very, very proud of me. But again, he doesn't get it. So these things happen. And then I've taken it on as my work to help him understand as best I can, let go of it when I don't need him to understand, and then also make my own shifts so that the things don't hit as much, right? Okay, so here's the story. So in October of last year, I booked the Goldbergs, which was great. I was really excited. 
It was awesome. And my dad didn't think I was on screen enough. He was like, oh, I didn't realize it was going to be so short. I wish it had been longer or something like that. Then fast forward to February of this year, I called my dad because I was over the moon. I was pinned for two jobs at the same time. And I was like, oh my God, like I booked something in October and now I might work two jobs at the same time. This is so exciting. And I tell my dad this, like I'm pinned for these two roles. And his response, God love him was, that's great, but would you appear on screen for longer than 20 seconds? And I think as I was sitting in my backyard, I literally did the like, pull the knife out of my heart pantomime motion because it hurt. There were a lot of feelings that I felt in that particular moment. I was like, God, I'm just, am I not good enough? I will never be good enough. In the actual moment, I ended up saying something like, well, you know, dad, it's really not about how long you're on screen. Let's not worry about this. And I realized after we hung up that I had two choices. I could either spiral down and continue down on that spiral of I'm not good enough. I will never be good enough. My career will never be good enough doing, you know, co-stars and 20 seconds on screen here and there. It's, it's never going to be good enough. Why even bother? I could have done that or I decided my other option was to get curious about those feelings, acknowledge and process them and choose to see my dad's question from a more empowering perspective, some place that actually served me and moved me forward in my mindset and in my career rather than took me completely out of the game, right? So I thought about it and I really did feel my feelings too. Like that's a really important step. Like that hurts. And you might have to call a friend or text a friend and be like, oh, I can't believe that. Like what? I talked to my husband about it and he was like, oh, oh yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Again, talking, sharing that load. Right. So I really, I felt my feelings. I really thought about it. And I decided to find the love that was behind it. And I remembered how much my dad loves me, how much my dad loves my work, how supportive he is of me and my career, how much he believes in me. And so the conclusion that I came to out of all of that was that I realized that what he was really saying in saying this was, I believe in you and I want to see more of you. He wasn't upset that I wasn't booking good enough jobs. It was basically just that he wanted to see more of me. He wanted to see more of me on his TV. He wants to see my work because he believes in me. He's proud of me. He likes what I do. He thinks I do a good job. So that was the empowering meaning that I chose to see behind those words. And that's not easy, but it has helped me a lot. It has helped me move forward in a lot more ways rather than like spiraling down and and feeling disempowered from any of that conversation. Because ultimately what matters is the meaning that you make. So we have to be making empowering meanings from all of these conversations and these situations. It's okay to feel our feelings. I certainly do that all the time. But let the overall story that you take away from the interaction serve you rather than sideline you and take you out of the game completely. Really what's happening is that they're hitting on insecurities that are within us. And so then that's the work to recognize that like, oh, this interaction makes me feel bad. We kind of are assuming that our loved ones mean the best, that they're acting with love. And so if we are sort of experiencing like, okay, they, they mean well, I'm still feeling like shit. What do I do with that? And that's where to start looking at those insecurities and our own sort of like, you know, the dialogue that we have with our inner critic, ways that we ourselves don't feel like we're good enough or doing enough or things like that. And that's where these shifts can start to happen. So that was a lot to to take you all through. That was kind of a big slide and a big journey. It's a lot to process and kind of take in. So take your time with it, obviously. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you found that valuable and informative. Please like, comment, and share this video with anybody that you think could benefit from it. Also, if you wanna watch the entire workshop all in one go, you can go to my website, thealignedactor.com, and find it in my library. My website is also a great place to find out more about me, Amy Schlerb, and all of my work as a life coach and an actor and all the other great stuff that I do and things. Until next time, take care. Bye.